Hi, I'm Nick Malowick. Welcome to episode three of An Evil Mind, a vlog from Xenobooks. Today we're going to talk about hard-boiled crime fiction and Black Mask magazine and uh, the work of Carol John Daly. Before this, I should probably preface, we're going to spend a little bit of time in the, uh, I guess, the, the period between wars, so between world wars. Um, this was an extremely fertile period for crime fiction, both in the United States and in the UK. Uh, we're going to look at both those, uh, but, so, but I need to talk about Black Mask and, and even a little bit about his competitor, Dime Detective, which in the 1920s and 30s were the preeminent crime story magazines in America and gave rise uh, to some of our greatest authors in the genre. Um, Black Mask alone is responsible for introducing the work of Dashiell Hammett, of Raymond Chandler, uh, Cornell Woolrich, Raoul Whitfield, uh, uh, Philip Marlowe did not initially appear in Black Mask magazine as a character, but some of Raymond Chandler's stories uh, about other private eyes such as Dalmas, uh, Carmody, and Malloy uh, were eventually reworked into elements of the Philip Marlowe novels. Dashiell Hammett, importantly, did debut several of his novels in serial form in Black Mask magazine. For example, Red Harvest, the greatest of the books about his character, The Continental Op. So, uh, but we're not going to talk about that just so far today. Um, probably Hammett next time. Hard-boiled fiction. What is it? Um, I think I talked about in the very first episode that there were different uh, subgenres of crime fiction and they were not the same. They're often used interchangeably. So noir, for example, is not the same as hard-boiled fiction. We'll get to that because that's largely a post-World War II phenomenon. So that'll be coming up here. Um, but hard-boiled starts in the 20s. Uh, Black Mask magazine itself begins in April of 1920. Interestingly, one of its first uh, editors and one of the co-founders uh, is the columnist and journalist H.L. Mencken. Um, Black Mass was not exclusively a crime magazine. It did do some Western stories, some more uh, typical men's adventure stories, uh, but it made its name with crime. And, and in the late 30s, it did become explicitly, exclusively a crime magazine. Uh, Hard-boiled fiction was a reaction to the conditions of the Depression and prohibition. Uh, both of these cause a loss of faith in institutions. Uh, prohibition at the time, the outlawing of the sale and manufacture of alcohol, was our first drug war. It in its parallels to the modern drug war that we've been operating under since, depending on how you date it, 1914 or you know uh, 1937. Uh, it had the same things. Corruption is rampant under such conditions. Uh, public institutions, the government, the police, all become untrustworthy. Couple this with the, uh, you know, the troubles of the depression, and you've got a recipe for a very cruel time, a very, you know, flinty period, um, where you know, survival was largely a matter of self-sufficiency. Institutions went, you know, gone. Um, you know, really, until we start to see recovery under you know, Roosevelt and the New Deal in the 1930s. Even then, it's very difficult for the majority of people in America. Um, and there's a saying that hard times make hard people. And that's absolutely true. So, you know, the 20s, while, you know, we see that as the, uh, you know, sp rich, spend-crazy uh, jazz age, well, that's true up to a certain point, um, but Prohibition had come in in 1919, so that gave crime a major boost. You know, organized crime in America would not have become what it did except for Prohibition. The profit potential in selling alcohol as the profit potential today in selling, say, heroin or cocaine was massive. 
and judges are on the take, cops are on the take. These are all very real issues. So fiction emerges that's going to deal with this. And a particular sort of character emerges who is going to deal with this. And that is the private eye. You say, okay, you know, Dupas was a private eye. Sherlock Holmes was a private eye. You know, what makes uh, the private eyes of the 20s and 30s and 40s different? Um, the other, Holmes, for example, Holmes cooperated with government officials. He, you know, worked hand in glove with Scotland Yard, for example. Uh, you know, Dupas worked with the prefect of the Paris police, for example, very closely. Uh, they were indeed friends. But while a hard-boiled private eye may have a friend on the force, because the hard-boiled private eye himself, in most cases, used to be a cop and was either fired from the police or quit the police for various reasons. Um, the hard-boiled private eye in this time period operates as an intermediary between the public and the government, between the lower classes and the upper classes, between citizens and criminals. Uh, the the hard-boiled private eye transcends social class, at least in the sense that they are able to move back and forth between various social classes and, and aspects of society. There is effectively nowhere the private eye can't go. Now, this he gets over on this because he is willing to employ violence in the pursuit of his objectives. And his objective is usually to find the truth. Often his objective is to find the truth when no one wants him to find the truth. Um, the private eye's enemies, of course, are criminals, but his enemies are also just as likely to be the police or the people that hired him in the first place. Uh, you know, rich people hire private eyes. They've got some secret they want to keep from official dumb. Uh, they don't want, you know, somebody in the government to find out about it. They want the cops to find out about it, even if they are uh, safe from the interference of the police. Um, and also people in the lower classes hire private eyes because the police are totally undependable. And the police are, in fact, you know, in, in this particular time, largely seen as enemies of the underclass. So, Black Mass Magazine introduces the work of Carol John Daly, who creates what we would first recognize as the modern private eye. Um, his very first such character was known as Three Gun Terry, who I believe only appeared in one story. But with that story, Daly beats Dashiell Hammett to market with a tough private eye. Daly's next character, Race Williams, is the important one here. So, in Race Williams, Carol John Daly presents a very basic template for the hard-boiled private eye from which other writers like Hammett and Chandler can build and add their stylistic touches. Because to be perfectly honest, Carol John Daly doesn't have a heck of a lot of uh, stylistic touches. He's a very, not a bad writer, uh, a very unadorned uh, writer. It's very, it's, it's simply plotted. You can tell he was being paid by the word. There are certain phrases you know, for example, that, that get used over and over, expressions that uh, Race Williams employs. And he is very, uh, Williams, the character, is very consciously speaking to the reader. Um, I can recommend the way Race Williams stories, at least the early ones, at least the ones written during the 1920s, because they went on to, I believe, 1958. Uh, Daly was well along in years. The very first Race Williams story comes out in 1920, and that is, I believe, Knights of the Open Palm, which is an anti-Ku Klux Klan story where Race Williams, you know, fights them. Um, probably the best known Williams story, novel, actually, is The Snarl of the Beast, uh, where Williams has to protect a, uh, a junkie who may or may not be coming into a significant inheritance and said junkie's girlfriend from a maniacal 
uh, criminal who is described as as ape like. I mean, he's a he's a huge guy, arms hanging, you know, practically hands practically down to his knees, uh, who doesn't speak really and he he just he emits these horrible noises and he is known even to the new york city police as the beast they're looking for the guy williams is looking for him uh the beast himself is looking for williams because he knows that williams has gotten into his way even colludes with a crooked lawyer uh for whom williams has done work in the meantime they're all chasing after uh a, you know the dying junkie heir um you know, there's a little bit more to it than that, but um, it's probably a story that could have been dispensed with in, in, in less space than it takes, but it was serialized in Black Mask. Um, what's important about Williams is that the stories are, are very tough. Uh, violence is Race Williams' first instinct um and he's very open about that he would you know we would probably call him a sociopath today doesn't mind killing people very mercenary um and part of that is even his own is in his own self-image he, he he makes a big point out talking about how he, he'll do just about anything for a buck except for dishonor he won't, he won't frame somebody for example for money um you know, he won't kill someone just for money. On the end, he does not mind killing anybody who gets in his way. And in this way, he's very much the progenitor of Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer, uh, something that Spillane in his lifetime admitted to openly, and also certainly something which did not go unnoticed by Carol John Daly, whose fortunes by the late 1940s had fallen significantly. Uh, he frankly resented, oh, and it has been quoted as saying, you know, that, that uh, you know, he doesn't like that Mickey Splane is getting rich off of what Daly felt was his character, and, and he's got a, a point to be made there. Quick summation. Do you need to read the Race Williams story? Do you need to read the early Black Mass stories? Well, some of them, absolutely. Um, and we'll talk about that when we talk about Hammett and, and Chandler. Uh, both of whom were much more artistic than Daly ever was. Do you need? But do you need to read these? I won't say if you're a completist, you do. I will say that if you were interested in the history of the genre, if you're interested in the history of private, I mean, that's why I'm talking about them in the first place. So you know, there it's worth reading a few of the short stories. It's worth reading, you know, if you just want to shortcut, read Snarl the Beast, and that's probably that's going to tell you everything you need to know about Race Williams and Carol John Daly. Who, just side note did also have a character who was a police officer um, named uh, Satan Hall was the guy's nickname because I mean, of course of course you know everybody's scared of Satan Hall the way there everybody is scared you know cops and robbers alike are scared of race Williams so next time like I said we are definitely talking about Hammett um, so that's the uh, the upper side of the black mask boys as author and editor William F Nolan called them and hope to see you then. Uh, please like the channel. Please subscribe to the notifications for the channel. Follow the links in the uh, below in the comments to you know buy books, to buy my books. If you could, please, I'd appreciate that. Um, and also to follow us on social media. And thank you very much for your time. We'll see you later on. Goodbye.